of those different areas, those five pillars that I call, come from the heart of, you know, where God has brought me through from the age of, well, it's been a journey since I was born, child. But, you know, um, really the crux of where my faith comes from and why do I believe what I believe and how I believe. It really just comes from me struggling as a young girl and I think everyone can relate to that boy or girl you know man women we all struggle with some level of trying to feel like we fit in and trying to figure out you know what do I have to do in order for me to get the attention that I desire we benefit from being honest about what we want what we desire and why we're seeking after it and at, at that age I realize now as an adult that what I was seeking, the attention that people could give me, they really couldn't fulfill the void or the need that I had within me. And so I'm, I'm grateful for the journey, but the truth is that it was very painful to go through. It was very challenging and my heart goes out to young girls and people in general who are struggling through suicide and struggling through depression and hating what they see in the mirror and ultimately causing damage to the, their own selves, their own body because they don't like what they see, they don't like the skin that they're in or the hair that they have or the clothes that they wear or the circumstances that are their reality. And, and you know, part of my sharing my testimony is to bring hope and to encourage that A, you're not alone, but B, there is more to the story. It doesn't have to end here. And for me, it, it, it felt like it was going to end there. It felt like this was it and that was just it. I didn't see myself living past the age of 15 and that's that's very, very real. I didn't have plans to become a doctor or get married or have children because I was convinced that I was not gonna live past the age of 15. So at the age of 14, I'm making rash decisions. I'm, I'm very emotional. I'm angry all the time and my family doesn't understand why all people see is that's an angry child or, you know, she just has an attitude problem, but they don't see that there's something deeper digging at them. And I'm just so grateful for the grace of God. I'm grateful for him literally interrupting my life and getting my attention so that I may recognize that I have all of his attention. And it's 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 just it's the rawness of it most nights i really desired that god would just take me i i i thought of creative ways for the lord to just kill me honestly i felt like well maybe a car will hit me today or maybe you know i'll get shot or maybe you know like and it's crazy to say out loud now but it's what I lived through. It's what I really day to day endured silently. I would write in my journal about it. I would kind of try to pray, but oftentimes I felt like God didn't even listen to my prayers. So I'm like, what's the point anyway? And I got to the point that I was just like, well, you know what? I'm going to stop eating and I'm going to try this. You know, maybe if I lose weight, I'll get attention or you know, someone would, would like me or something. And so at the age of 14, I decided that I was going to stop eating altogether because I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be a certain size. That led to me ending up in the hospital because I dehydrated. So I had to be fed through IV and being able to learn how to stabilize my body once again to eat normal food. And that led into me just being, being very obsessive about keeping off the weight that I lost in a very unhealthy manner, very dangerously. I could have I could have easily died uh, from not having the nutrients that I needed in my body. At the age of 15, I um, essentially was just having a regular day 
and I come from come I'm coming home from um, the gym at my school and I remember just you know feeling a bit of, of, of pain on my arms and my legs and I just counted it to okay that must be just you know pain from you know working out soreness etc maybe about two three days later I realized the pain isn't really going away and it's actually getting worse I am struggling to walk at this point and I remember trying to get home from school and getting home finally and collapsing to the floor because I'm in so much pain. I mean like excruciating pain to the place where I can't be touched. And I just remember laying there and just calling out for my mom and me trying to explain to her I'm in excruciating pain. Now here I am 15 years old trying to figure out what's happening to my body having no idea where it's coming from or what's getting ready to happen and i remember laying there my mom rushes down and she tries to help me i'm telling her please don't touch me because i'm in so much pain i get rushed to the hospital and immediately they medicate me giving me painkillers and long story short i end up starting a journey of what would be the greatest one of the greatest challenges in my life i am in and out of the hospital consistently and i notice you know at this point i have bruises in my arms and my legs but the doctors couldn't really figure out what it was test after test and i'm talking about five to six tubes a day i'm getting tested and i remember me hating going to the hospital day in and day out and me kind of being a guinea pig and being looked at like wow so this is a phenomenon what can we figure out here I finally get to the fact that i have symptoms of what is called vasculitis vasculitis is essentially all of the arteries in my arms and my legs are literally bursting which is what caused bruises on my arms and my legs which i had not even paid attention to or realized until i collapsed and I, 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 you know, the doctor's trying to explain to us, you know, what this is, but they're saying to us, although we know the symptoms that it's vasculitis, we don't know what the root of it is. And that's what they're trying to get to, because in order for them to stop the symptoms, they have to get to the root of the problem. And they're doing tests after tests in and out of the hospital. I get to the point that I dread going to the hospital. I hated going to the hospital because it just felt like an endless endless torture why am i getting asked a million questions repeating my story time and time again all for them to say we don't know or there's nothing more that we can do and it's at that point that i begin to get angry at god and i'm like god i don't i don't get this i, I don't understand why bring me to the world to just suffer? Like, what's the big idea? What's the point of breath in my body if I'm going to be struggling to live day to day? Like, like in my mind, I just didn't understand and it felt like cruelty. It felt like God was playing with me. And, and that's just the honest, raw reality. At 15, I grew up in church and I was told, you don't question God, you don't, you know, get mad at God. But I was like, listen, I have nowhere to go. At this point, I'm literally in bed pretty much the entire day getting assistance from my mom to use the bathroom to get up to do certain things and sometimes i couldn't even get up because they had to heavily medicate me and give me muscle relaxants so they gave me um, steroids in order for my muscles to be able to relax so that i don't feel pain but the medication was so heavy i would pretty much just be numb and i could not function normally and so I, I i'm spending a lot of time by myself and i'm just building all of this anger within me you know and the only thing that i had the opportunity to do which was journal and draw i couldn't even do that because the muscle relaxants kind of inhibited me from being able to do that and I, i'm just like god i'm crying like i don't get this like i'm legitimately angry like just just take me now like seriously just take me and i remember finally kind of getting to that place of like okay so i guess if this is the end of my life 
you know, I accept it. It is what it is. You know, my aunt had passed away at the age of 20. So in my mind, I'm like, well, maybe this is it. Like, I'm, I'm just going to die here from this unknown disease. And, you know, um, this is going to be my lot. This is my story. And I remember just pretty much just kind of accepting that like okay so this is it and so then I'm thinking like wow God you know just take care of my mom you know help them through this you know and I'm literally thinking like wow I'm, I'm this is it I'm not gonna make it after this and it's at that moment that I remember vividly feeling like okay I'm gonna open the Bible and just read what's on there and I opened up the Bible you know slowly and carefully because of course I, I I'm I'm Everything is limited um, that I could do on my own. And so I slowly open the Bible and the Bible opens to Isaiah 61. Now, I don't know the scripture. I don't know what exactly it's about at the age of 15. I only know like the basic scriptures, uh, you know, Psalm 23 and, um, you know, Psalm 100, etc. But but Isaiah 61, I don't really know what's what's on there. So I start reading, you know, verses 1, 2, and 3 and... but I felt God was directly speaking to me that I had a purpose and God was anointing me for something. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, I don't even know what the word anointed means. As I'm sitting there thinking through the scripture that I just started reading, feeling a presence that I had never felt or experienced in my life before. This is something that you can't make up, something that as creative as I was then just is something that I just couldn't come up on my own like I literally was looking around my room like what is happening you know I'm looking at the window like there's no window open for a wind to be coming in and so at that moment I'm realizing like wait something supernatural is happening here like God is 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 making his presence known to me 15 year old Anna who has a million questions and a lot of attitude. And I'm like, like overwhelmed, like I'm speechless. I don't really have anything to say. All I can do at that moment was just start weeping, just weeping, weeping uncontrollably because that's all that I could do. I had no words, no explanations. I didn't even have any questions. Like I was just like, wow. And I'm sitting in all of this and just weeping and I remember just kind of laying down in the midst of all of this and I press play on a the stereo system that my brothers had just given me for my birthday and yes it was a cassette player and I remember just hitting play and this song starts playing in Spanish and the song is literally verbatim singing the scripture that I just read and i'm like whoa like i mean think about it like you know something like that happening to you doesn't happen every day so it's kind of like what in the world you know at least to me that was not how i experienced my day to day and as i was listening to that i am just like overwhelmed like wow god okay i get it like i hear you I, and you know and i remember feeling in that moment the spirit of the lord just giving me peace and letting me know like it doesn't end here this is not the end of your story and I was like okay I felt this sudden confidence and assurance that I was gonna be okay I don't know how I don't know I didn't have any evidence I didn't have any paperwork that said that I just felt it I had like a knowing that I was gonna be okay next day I wake up and I'm still like in a high like what in the world just happened last night? And I remember going the next day into the doctor's office, my regular visit. We get brought into a, an office that I had not visited before. And the doctor says to me, you know, sits us down and kind of gives us this weird look. And I'm like, okay, what's happening? You know, what's going on? And so the doctor says, okay, so lab work have just returned from your biopsy that they did for my bone marrow. And the results came back that you are positive or you have leukemia. And I remembered what leukemia was because that's when my aunt had passed away from just a few years back. And for us, for our family, that was like a death sentence. At that point, there wasn't big research, you know, that 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 showed a cure or a possibility of longevity or being able to, you know, beat cancer. And I was, you know, I heard what he said, 
but I wasn't moved by what he said. You know, of course my father being my dad and I'm the youngest of three, the only girl, he just breaks down. Like he has a father human moment. And I'm like, dad, like, you know, pull it together. You know, I'm trying to keep it together. You can't be breaking down, you know. Um, but you know, my dad is a praying man. I call him Daniel the Demon Slayer because honestly, my father goes, he's he's one of a kind, you know. But at that moment, he was having a, a human moment, a real father moment. and. I remember looking at the doctor and I said to him, I hear what you're saying, but I, I'm okay. I, I know that I'm going to be okay and I believe God. And I remember him saying to me, you know, it's okay, Anna, to, to cry. You don't have to pretend to be strong. It's all right, you know. And I said to him, yeah, I know, but I'm not going to cry and I don't feel like crying because I feel like I'm going to be okay. And he gave me this look of, kind of like oh poor girl she's in denial you know or maybe like she's brainwashed or something like I that I walked away just kind of like confident that I was gonna be okay you know and my dad helped me in the car we got home and he tells my mom my family gets very worried but I ultimately said to my mother that weekend there was gonna be a prophet in town and at this point I had not been going to church because it was very challenging and I finally you know decide I want to go to church today I don't care what it takes I know that I was told that I shouldn't go to, to you know uh, to public places a lot because my immune system was very sensitive very low and I could get sick easily and they were just like you know you should you just should not be if it's not necessary, if it's not absolutely dire, just re refrain from going uh, to different places and, and having too much activity. I insisted and we go to the uh, service uh, that day. And I remember going, um, carried in and we sit down, regular service and the, the prophet is in the midst of a sermon. He doesn't know me from a can of paint. I don't even know the man's name. Like, we don't know each other, but he stops in the middle of the sermon out of the clear blue sky, points towards my direction and says, God told me to tell you, you're not going to die. He, had a, he doesn't know that I just got diagnosed with leukemia. He has no idea. And I remember kind of looking back like, is, is he talking to me? You know, we all do that. Like, you know, somebody's trying to point at us or whatever in service, you know, those that the, of us that go to church and you kind of try to figure out like, I don't want to get excited yet if you're not talking to me, you know? But he, he, I kind of look around and he's like, no, I'm talking to you. God told me to tell you, you're not going to die. And at that point I was just like struck in shock. Like, I'm like, this is like beyond me. Why would God take the time? to stop a service to speak to me and about me and, and toward me. And I'm, I'm even now telling the story, I'm so overwhelmed because oftentimes we pray to God about things and we don't know how he's gonna answer, but we just know that hopefully he sends us a sign that he hears us and he cares and that the attention that I'm seeking, he can actually fulfill. And I was just weeping. My mom was crying. My brothers were like, oh my goodness. Like they were just in shock, you know, just as much as I was. And the prophet comes over. He grabs me from underneath my arms and carries me. He doesn't know that I can't walk or that, you know, that that's a struggle. But he, he literally is like kind of carrying me. And I'm trying to make my way to walking little by little. And he's saying to me, this is how God is going to carry you. This is how he is showing me that he's going to take you through life and everything that happens to you he's allowing for a reason and God is going to use you to minister and he begins to speak into my life and all I could remember was how the Lord had just visited me and so it was like the prophet was confirming everything that had just happened and I'm just it, it was so surreal like I felt like it was an outer body experience like I'm like I thought this only happened in like movies or you know to other people but not not me and that night you know happens and I get back home and I'm like mom I really feel like God is going to heal me and she says to me Anna I I'm gonna believe with you you know my parents had you know they're praying 
parents there and I thank God for that you know and, and they were a hundred percent you know like yes you know we've been praying and we believe in God with you and so I go ahead and I'm like yeah I'm, I'm gonna believe God that he's just gonna heal me and I'm not gonna have to take medication anymore and I don't typically recommend you just stop something medication or whatever unless you really felt the Lord ministering to you specifically, you know, uh, because it, it can be very dangerous if we're just excited about something and we just go ahead and do it without consulting with God. And I remember specifically, you know, the doctor said to us that I could not stop taking the medicine that I was taking because it's uh, it, it's one of those medications that you have to taper over time, meaning like literally just kind of uh, decrease the dosages because it can cause shock to your body if you just stop abruptly. And uh, I was just like, you know what? I know what he said, but I know what just happened. I, 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 supernatural visitation for me is like, okay, God, you're up to something. Like this is not for happenstance. This is not. This is not for entertainment. And so I went ahead and just went to sleep with that assurance and that confidence. Like God, you're gonna heal me. And I go to sleep and wake up the next morning. And I open my eyes. You know, I didn't go into speaking in tongues or anything. It was very chill, very, you know, regular. I just said, here we go. You know, like, here we go, Lord. And I remember sitting up and I'm like, okay, I don't feel any pain. And I didn't need, need any assistance to get up. Okay, with that, we're doing good. We're all right. So far, so good. You know, and then I remember putting my legs down slowly and realizing, like, wait a minute, I don't feel any pain on my legs either. And at that point, I realized, oh my gosh, God really did it. And I'm like, like, God, God really did it. And I'm so excited. I, I just jump off my bed at this point. I run over to my parents' room and I'm like, mom, dad, God did it. Like, I don't feel any pain. I didn't need any help. I didn't take any medication. Like, I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine. Like, I'm, I'm good. I, like, God did the miracle. And I just remember just being so excited and so grateful. And the next day, we go to the doctor. I do my regular lab work. And the lab work comes within a couple of days. And they did, you know, the, 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 the test results again because they needed to do follow-up and check my levels. And the doctor brings me back to the same exact office that he just diagnosed me with leukemia and says to me, okay, so um, I remember him kind of like pausing, like, okay, so the only way that we can explain this is by calling it a medical phenomenon. But when we got back the results from the second biopsy that we did, it's coming back. There's no trace of leukemia in your body, like at all. And I remember just saying to him, like, I told you that God would do it. And he didn't respond, you know, because at that point, you know, I, I get it. The medical field is never going to say God did a miracle. That's, that's, that's not empirical data, you know, but I know, I know that I know that I know, like, God just did a miracle in my life and you can call it a medical phenomenon, but I know what God did. And I remember just being so grateful for what God has done. And that has been the foundation of my life. And granted that happened years ago. I was 15 and over 15 years later, God is allowing me and giving me the opportunity to share this not so that I can say, oh my goodness, God loves me so much and look what he did for me, but rather to give you hope that what he did for me, he can do for you, he can do for anybody. And it doesn't have to be cancer related. It can be anything. 15 years, a journey for me of dealing with fear, dealing with rejection, rejection and unforgiveness. Like there were so many layers to me. It was beyond cancer. Like God be gone with cancer for me physically, but began to work with me internally, emotionally, my mind, my heart, my image issues, my rejection issues, my anger, like so many 
many layers God was unpeeling and all of that to reveal the ultimate will. Like God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think, you know, not just as a cliche, but like to really experience it in the flesh, experience it in my heart, in my mind, like God, honestly, recent moments, if it had not been truly, truly, I'm not just saying that as like a church thing, but like, if God didn't keep my mind, there would be no way that I could be here testifying or talking about anything faith related. You know, I got moments where I'm like, I don't even know what to believe anymore. But that moment where God supernaturally visited me, healed me and did for me is the, the rock that I visit to remind me if he could do it then, he surely can do it now. And I just want to encourage people truly like he's a miracle working God. God is, is real. You know, God really is not just a myth. You know, Jesus is not just a historical figure, a literary figure, you know, that we just talk about a man that died on the cross, but that resurrecting power lies within us because Christ died on the cross. And what does that mean? Like, that sounds like crazy language, but it's like, well, this is what this is about. Let me introduce you to the man, the, the being, the existence, the, the, the hope that I carry day to day that helps me to smile and say, it's going to be a good day no matter what life looks like, no matter what is happening. And so, you know, that's what this is about. And I just wanted to share that. I know this is, you know, as, as, as longer than I really wanted it, but just encourage that as we walk through these five pillars and we talk about what it means to have faith and how to relate to our family and our friends and how to foster change in our community and how to carry out our finances and what does really God want in terms of like fitness and health and you know what what does the Bible say about that you know that we day-to-day -day challenge ourselves to be better and as, as somebody once said to me you know all of our lives is the undoing of ourselves until we are completely undone before the presence of god and so while media in the world and everybody's talking about you know um um being you know doing you being you and becoming all of this and and adding and all of these different things that makes us want to prove who we are I challenge us to lessen the need to want to prove yourself and really just allow God to prove himself in our lives and really be able to be light in the midst of darkness, be able to really speak hope to hopeless situations and be able to just smile even when somebody was nasty to you, you know, gave you an attitude, be the difference, you know, be the change agents. And that's what this channel is about. That's what all of this is going to be about. And I just hope that you have been blessed. I just hope that somehow, you know, your prayers perhaps have been answered through this or that, you know, you somehow were maybe in a, in, in trying to figure out, well, you know, do I really want to follow God or what is this whole religious thing about? I just want to encourage you to just allow God, invite him in, like literally, God, I want to get to know you, show yourself and he will. He may not come the way that you may want him to, you know, he may not answer the, 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 the questions that you particularly may have for a thing, but he is the answer for everything. And I, I want to be able to just pray with you all and I'll see you next time. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this opportunity. And I thank you for every person that has decided to watch this video and listen to my testimony, my story, and perhaps light a fire within them, God. I'm praying that as I speak, Father, you are entering their lives. You are interrupting their plans. You are intervening on what seems like hopelessness and darkness all around them, God. I am praying that you will reveal yourself to them and that the spark of hope may be right rising within them, God, knowing that the way that you healed me, that that is possible for their own circumstances or for a family member that they may be praying for, God, you are a healer. You are still a miracle working God. That is just not a story of the Bible, but you are active. Your word is alive. Lord, your word cuts through, God, any circumstance. It cuts through any pain, any hurt, any memory, any trauma, God, any suicidal thought, any depression, God. You are able to do so much, God. So do not let our uh, unbelief, God, 
hinder what you can do in our lives, God. We are asking this moment that you would have your way, God. Have your way in the lives of the people that are listening right now in the name of Jesus, God. And I'm praying that your all-consuming fire brings away all that is not like you in their lives, God. Anything, God, that is causing weight or pain or hurt or trauma, God, we are praying that you would lift it, God. I am praying, God, for your peace that surpasses all understanding even now, God. I am praying for your angels to surround them, God, and I'm praying for your word to be made alive in their circumstances right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and I just say thank you for this opportunity. Amen and amen. So I pray you were blessed, and um, that's it. I don't have much more to say, <laughs> like I didn't say a lot, right? Um, but I'll see you next time. God bless you.